Okay, what is up all of you awesome and amazing people on YouTube? Kuda Malloy here coming at you with another exciting video. Doing some batoning out here at Glen Campground. Let's see how this goes. I used my Silky Saw, Silky Gomboy to process down some wood. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use, this is the SE Laser Strike and this is the First Edge 50-50. It's just going to do a quick baton test. I have no idea what kind of wood this is. I think this is something along the lines of ash or maple. It's pretty, uh, it's pretty solid, let's say. It was hard to get the auger in. I tried using the hand auger on this little part right here to try to create a little rocket stove. And I could only get in so far before I just gave up. It was a little too hard. I tried using another piece of wood, like a stick to go through here. Still wouldn't turn. So this hard packed wood is great for fires if you can baton it down to get the fire started, etc. So let's do some batoning and see what happens. I'll start with the SE laser strike since that's already kind of going. But basically, it's I'm holding one side. I'm using this other piece of wood to baton through it. Pretty easy. What I would do is then break this down even more into like pencil size sticks just so that it'll catch easier and then probably do some feather sticking this is extremely dry if i come a little closer and try to do some feather sticking i mean it comes off pretty good this should light fairly quickly so i know it's not the perfect feather stick i'm just doing this for demonstration purposes maybe somebody out there might gain some knowledge from this but as you can see, this is really dry and crumbly, right? Just crumbles in my hand. This would light relatively easy. So let's do another baton through the wood and see what the SE laser strike does. So if I come on this side, what I'm doing is, is I'm doing this on a table and I have the piece of wood over where the leg of the table is so that as I baton down, I'm concentrating the weight over the leg of the table so I don't bend or break the table. It's very important. Ideally, you could do it on this stump over here. Let's do that. Let's try it. So, if I come over here to this nice wooden stump right here, maybe this might be a little more friendly to the campsite. So here we go, here's my piece of wood. Here's my SE laser strike. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to hit the tip, the tip or the end of the knife. I'm not hitting this side, otherwise I have risked the chance of breaking the knife in two. So I'm hitting this side, this is the SE laser strike again. going through pretty easy as you can see right there right so I got a good amount down what I can do from this point is I can try to pry not gonna pry so I'll baton it a little more readjust there we go Readjust again. I think I might have bitten off more than I could chew. What I'm going to do is come back. Come back and maybe get a little smaller piece. So let's say right here. So let me show you this real quick. What I've got here is this little, this was the first cut I made. Granted, I started with the first edge, came back in with the SE laser strike. Now I'm cutting off this little sliver. And as I, as I cut down, as you can see, the wood's already starting to split right there. So I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna try to maneuver with my left hand. I'm gonna try to turn the knife this way so that this, hopefully this piece just comes right off. 
and then eventually I'll baton this down to pencil sized sticks, get a feather stick going, throw it in the barbecue or the fire pit, and then have my little fire ready for lunch or dinner or breakfast or whatever the case may be. So I'm going to readjust a little. the knife out. Sometimes it pulls and breaks, sometimes it doesn't. This particular piece of wood is a little dense, so we're going to do another cut. Let's try to come this way. Okay, this is going to break off pretty easy. So now as you can see right there, I've made a few different cuts. These two pieces should break off pretty simple and easy, right? SE Laser Strike in action. Links will be down below in the description. Make sure to check that out. So as I come in, and like I said, I'm with my left hand, I'm turning the knife to try to get these pieces to come off a little easier. Little readjusting. Right? And the reason why I did that is I'm trying to get more of the blade of the knife through so that I have more of a surface here to baton onto. Instead of just hitting the tip of the knife, potentially risking breaking it off, I'm hitting more of the meat of the blade to give me that extra room for real estate to do the batoning. point good to go so so from here I'm gonna whittle these down even more get pencil sized sticks those will help me to start the fire a little bit faster and then what I'll do is I'll just keep trimming so that's a good lesson I guess to learn from what I just did is don't try to bite off more than you can chew don't try to go through maybe the center of the piece of wood right away try to just get little edges off you're basically trying to build up as much small kindling as you can to eventually get that fire started quickly and then you can add the bigger pieces on top of it your full-blown tree branches and then eventually a log once you get your fire up and raging and all that kind of stuff so let me grab the, the blade real quick and we'll do some some feather sticking so some people do it this way where they're moving the knife right other people hold the knife brace it against something maybe you can brace it against this and you're pulling so the knife goes here and I'm pulling this stick a little bit more control that way and this wood is extremely dry, but you kind of get the idea, right? I'm doing little curly cues. See if we can pick this up on camera. Just basically doing little curly cues that will eventually catch on really quick with the lighter and then eventually get my fire started. So the curly cues will light the pencil size sticks of wood those sticks of wood will light the smaller branches and then eventually the smaller branches will eventually light the bigger branches so you kind of get the idea what you could do if you are going to do the rocket stove thing that i started <laughs> couldn't make it through this piece of wood but what you could do is, is you could always pop these off like this and then after you get your two holes going so i'm in a in an ideal situation which isn't necessarily a survival situation, but an ideal situation if you're just going to go to like a camping site like this. We're up at Glen Camp. What is this? Uh, San Gabriel Mountains, West Fork area. I would go down into this wood maybe a couple of inches, maybe three inches. As, as far as the auger will take me, right? So I would go down to here and then do my cross cut 
this way and then put these little these little shavings inside there some people can just light it pretty easy to do it lights up pretty quick that gets your fire going then you would put in your small little sticks get that going a piece this big this is about I want to say like three inches in diameter or so so about three inches in diameter and let's say let's say I left it on here I didn't cut it off like I could cut it off with the silky but let's say a piece this big just this little section this would probably last me about an hour like realistically as a rocket as a rocket stove it would probably last me about an hour if I just did this and just let it burn down all the way to the bottom and as it keeps burning eventually it'll probably consume this side I could probably get maybe three or four hours out of this so this in a barbecue let me show you that let's grab this let's work this over right so what you could do is once you get this thing going you could go hopefully it's cut you could stick this in the barbecue get your barbecue going if i was doing this out in let's say the wilderness area where there wasn't a barbecue pit i know it's a big question everybody's asking what you could do is you could do a couple rocks like you could do this kind of vibe where you've got some rocks or boulders you know that kind of essence like this would be a perfect spot to do this so check this out so this goes on the ground clear out everything that's around it so you don't catch your your forest on fire <laughs> make sure you've got plenty of dirt if you can try to get a nice five to six foot radius across just to make sure you're not going to ignite anything that's around it what i would do is light the stove the rocket stove and then i have different kinds of grates that i could put over this so i will put links down below in the description to some of the grates and grills that i found some of them are folding collapsible easy to put into your backpack or if you're bike packing your panniers that kind of vibe there's all the wood that i've already cut and that george cut with his sawzall cheater <laughs> he brought a full-blown 20 volt sawzall and cut a lot of that wood i think all of it pretty much and this was just left over from last last night's bonfire we, we didn't get too greedy we left a little wood for the next camper hiker backpacker group that comes in here and hopefully they'll have something to enjoy but anyways you get the idea but once you get your wood process down to the pieces that you think you're going to use these two rocks i think is a perfect setup for if you didn't have a firing or a fire pit and you're in a part of the united states or the country or the world where you can do this kind of stuff without the firing there you go there would be what you would do i am not going to light this here between these two because currently at this point in time the only fires that are allowed in this area are in the actual fire rings so because i have the fire ring what i would do is just bring this over right maybe clean out some of that ash in there but get that going light that and then when that burned down to coals let's say then what i could do is throw the grill back over and do some grilling and barbecuing and that's only like i said the firing is this specific situation every situation is different i could do this in the barbecue but you get the idea if you're in a part of the world or united states or whatever where you can do cowboy fires right five to six feet eight feet ten feet in diameter whatever the restrictions are in your area pay attention to the laws follow them let's try to all be responsible out here get your fire going do your barbecuing if you didn't have a grate let's say you didn't have a grill the heat that this thing would put off right the heat that would be created by just that one piece of wood would heat up both rocks what you could do is literally just slap something on the rock if you're bold and brave piece of chicken piece of steak if you're one of those survivalist types and you're you're gonna catch and kill and do that whole vibe you know whatever animal you decided to process while backpacking as long as it's legal in your area you know like i said be responsible 
You could just literally slap it on the rock and cook it up that way. I will try, I will try in a few weeks from now, maybe, maybe later on during the summer, I will try to do more of these bushcraft type videos, try to get more of the process. I'm going to look around because there are pine trees here. It's like, that's a pine tree, a conifer, like any, any kind of conifer is a good tree to do the rocket stove thing with the auger. So I will try to look around this area and see if I can find some downed conifer type wood, maybe some fat wood that has some tree sap in it and all that kind of stuff to try to do this a little easier or, may, or maybe a not so dry piece of wood that'll actually, that the auger can actually go through. And it's, you know, that, that goes back to the whole concept of having backups. I always like backups for everything. So from here, right, I had, I would choose one or the other. Like if I had to choose between the first edge and the SE laser strike, if it's, if it's a weight issue, you know, maybe the SE laser strike might be a better choice because it is lighter than the first edge. But at the same time, like, you know, I've got, let's say I chose the SE laser strike. I'm still bringing the auger with me because of this exact scenario. Let's say I tried the auger and the auger wouldn't go through the wood. And sometimes you may get into that situation where, you know, it's not gonna, like the auger's not gonna be able to, to make its way through. I bring the SE to be able to baton the wood. So if I can't do the rocket stove, what I could have done here, you know, I've almost got like a Swedish torch thing going on, right? If you look in there, it's almost a Swedish torch, right? Another couple cuts, it's basically a Swedish torch. So rocket stove is the whole concept. Let's see if I can get you in frame right here. Rocket stove is the whole concept of augering down and then augering in. You make an L shape, put your wood shavings in there, your small branches, your dried up grass, kindling fuel, that kind of stuff. Light it up, it burns for an hour. If the auger isn't cooperating with you, or the wood isn't cooperating with the auger, the backup plan would be use some kind of bushcraft, survival knife, whatever terminology you want to give this. Create your Swedish torch, right? And you can do that. So Swedish torch is just angular cuts. Like in a perfect world, in, every, in everybody else's YouTube videos, it's this nice piece of wood that everybody has like eight or six or four cuts in or whatever. In this world... <laughs> This is how it came out. What I could do is baton more of this, right, to get that going, come down about halfway or so, and then do the Swedish torch thing. I kind of like this little piece up here because I think it'll help to catch and burn, and then eventually the fire would just go down. I think if I had to choose, like, let's say size for size. Let's say this is three inches in diameter. Let's say this was also three inches in diameter. To me, it seems like, this will be a future video, to me, it seems like the rocket stove would probably burn a little bit longer, right? Because it's only, it's breathing from the bottom and rocket stoving from the top. So it burns from the inside out and I think it would just burn longer. It would take longer for the fire to spread and go across. Whereas a Swedish torch, because you've got all these cuts in it, I think it would, I think it would burn a little bit faster. But that's a future video. We'll have to do that on the next trip, perhaps. Okay, so everybody's wondering, let's test out the first edge, right? So let me go back to that stump over there. I'm gonna try to baton with the first edge and I'm gonna go through this big thick piece and let's learn from my mistakes. <laughs> I'm just gonna take off a little piece on the, on the around instead of trying to go straight through it. But let's see what happens. So let me set up the camera. We'll come around this way. So I just want to make sure I give you all a nice little view here. Okay. And first edge, here we come. What's this? What's this? You guys having fun? <laughs> all right. Big piece. First edge. This is the 50-50 in LMAX. We're going to try to get a little sliver on here on the side. I'm putting... 
what I'm doing is, is as I'm holding this, I'm not going to start like this because I have nowhere to baton into. I'm going to try to put the, the edge of the knife as far as possible. So as I baton, I'm batoning more the meat of the blade, right? Same like the SE, the SE laser strike. So this is the first edge. Let's see what happens. George, gotta thank George for cutting all this with his sawzall. Cheater, cheater. But anyways, here we go. So I'm gonna take a good chuck. So the first edge went through it. Maybe not like butter because it's a little thicker. But once you reach a certain point, see that cracking going on in there? That's the top view, just so you can see all these different angles. What I'm gonna do now is re readjust the knife, try to get more of the tip out so I can hit more in the meat of the blade, the center of the blade, the spine of the blade. That way I, I risk, it's a little less risk breaking off the tip, just the tip. Anyways, let's see what happens. I've readjusted more of the tip is out so that I'm now I'm, I'm at the meat of the blade. Let's see what happens. So same kind of vibe as the SE laser strike. This is a bite off more than I can chew thing, but I pry it, trying to pry it away. I'm almost there. And there it goes. So let's come in close so you can see what actually happened. There was definitely a lot of more wedge action going on versus because versus a uh, slicing. This steel is a little bit thicker than the first edges. You see me do the comparison video before, but if you'll notice, see how much more thicker the first edge is compared to the SE. So definitely something to, to note. The equivalent of this that's still being sold would probably be something like the SE5, I believe. The SE5 has that thickness. SE, if you're watching this video, you wanna send me a five to compare against the laser strike and come back up here to Glen Campground let me know <laughs> let me know let's try to feather stick with the first edge and see what happens so the woods the woods just a little bit too dry and if i do my pull technique where i'm trying to keep the knife yeah all the curly cues are just coming right off but anyways, you, you get the idea, right? You all get the idea watching this. So there would be my little wood shaving curly cues. I could try to light this directly. I'm pretty sure because this wood is so dry, I would just go right up like nothing. But what I would do in my cases is I'd probably break these off, make a little bundle, right? As the center of my fire, put some sticks on top of that. Ideally, it'd be nice if I could break this in half again, make like a pencil-sized thickness. So like thickness of a pencil is what I'm trying to get at. Pencil-sized pieces, maybe some more little pieces like this, get the fire going, eventually add bigger pieces, and then add bigger pieces on top of that, and then eventually probably get an entire branch going, right? Like something like this, where once you got the fire going, you could throw in a piece like this and then eventually you could throw in this whole chunk if you wanted to. But anyways, you get the idea. You get the concept. Kuda Malloy here. This video is getting way too long, but bushcrafting up here at Glen Campground in the San Gabriel Mountains. That's my view, just to give you a quick view. If you saw the previous videos, there's the bridge. The road comes in that way. It's a six mile hike from the parking lot, six and a quarter miles or so. Then there's a creek up this way. 
that kind of feeds the uh, the main river. The main river's down there. That's the West Fork. And then eventually Bear Creek comes into this as well. But you get the idea. That's the area that I'm in. I was lucky enough at this camp, this particular campsite, to have the fire ring. And I also had the barbecue pit. So that's it for now. If you have any questions, put them in the comment section. I'll put links to most of this stuff in the description section down there below. So make sure to check that out. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. And I will catch you all on the next exciting adventure. That for me, or this video for me, is going to be a wrap. I'll do maybe one more video, a wrap on Glen Campground, my experience here. It's great. It's great. And there, there are so many campsites that are like this across the San Bernardino Mountains, the San Gabriel Mountains, the Los Angeles National Forest. Just obey the rules. That's all I'm asking. Everybody that watches these videos and you're thinking about coming up here and doing this, be responsible. Obey the rules. The rules are there for a reason. And be nice to your neighbors and, and the people that are coming after you. George was so awesome at cutting up all this firewood. We felt like we didn't need it. So we're leaving it for the next campers, the next backpackers, the next people that are coming up here on bicycles, the next group, the next whatever. And try to do the same. Cut what you need and then maybe cut a little more for somebody else so that they can enjoy the same experience that you did and, and you enjoyed the same experience that somebody else did before you. So always remember that. Anyways, Cooter Malloy, here's a big shot of scene behind me and I will catch you all on the next exciting adventure.